Four years ago, the focus of the sporting world was on Mexico and the 13th edition of the FIFA World Cup. Mexico played well, but eventually bowed out to West Germany on penalty kicks. 1986 also marked Canada's first appearance in a World Cup final. And although it was a brief experience, it marked an important era in Canada's development as a soccer nation. Now in 1990, neither Canada nor Mexico will be in a World Cup final. Instead, it will be the United States and Costa Rica representing North and Central America in Italy. So today, a vital pre-World Cup tournament for the United States squad as they face Canada and Mexico in the Corona Three Nations Cup. Today, from Swangard Stadium in Burnaby, British Columbia, the first game in a three-game round robin as Canada hosts the United States. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to TSN's coverage of this Corona Three Nations Cup. I'm Vic Rotor, along with Graham Leggett. Three countries involved in this tournament, and all of them here with a different purpose. Mexico returns to international soccer after a two-year suspension for using overage players in an under-19 tournament. As for the United States, well, their World Cup preparation continues. This is really a split squad. The other half of this team, their World Cup team, was in New Jersey yesterday, and they were one nothing winners for Malta. About six players on this current roster here at Swan Guard are guaranteed spots in Italy. The other players players of the starting 16 will be fighting for jobs in Italy. As for Canada, well, this marks a beginning, the beginning of World Cup qualifying for 1994 to be held in the United States. The last time Canada was in a World Cup, of course, was 1986. The head coach then was Tony Waiters, and he returns again to hopefully guide Canada to another World Cup in the U.S., and he's with Graham Leggett. Tony, four years ago, you took the guys to Mexico. It's the second time around for you. Some old faces, some new faces. How does the team look? I think the team's looking good. There are some players, in fact, that uh, you've seen as much as I've seen. In, in, in other words, we've not seen them at all. Uh, Frankie Yallop, who's not even a Canadian, is playing today. and uh, In practice, he's looked a very exciting player, although he's a defender. Uh, Craig Forrest, I've never seen him play. Uh, John Limniatis, I've seen play a little bit on television. So, you know, I'm going to be as interested in looking at these players as you are. Uh, but I think uh, with fresh faces like that, uh, things are looking good for Canada. Now, we know that there's no such thing as a friendly. This game has to be important for you, your first one, and against the USA. Very important. We've got to serve notice both to the United States team and the, the Mexicans that we're back in business. We're back in World Cup business. So we start on the road to the World Cup 1994 today. Tony, good luck. We hope you get there for the next World Cup. Thank you very much, sir. Back to you, Vic. Thank you, Graham. And of course, with several members of this U.S. team fighting for jobs in Italy, this could be a much rougher game than Canada might expect if they were playing the final 16 of the U.S. team. So when we return to beautiful Swan Guard Stadium here in Burnaby, British Columbia, we will have the starting lineups for you. It's Canada against the United States, the Corona Three Nations Cup, and it's only right here on TSN.
the national teams of the United States and Canada getting ready for the opening game of this Corona Three Nations Cup here at Swan Guard Stadium in Vancouver, British Columbia. And here are the starting 11 for this U.S. side, Graham, and how will they line up on the field? Well, Coach John Kowalski is going to line up with a 4-4-2. Casey Keller will be the big goalkeeper. The back four will be Paul Crumpy, Troy Dyack, Robin Fraser, and Billy Crook. In midfield, Eichmann, Denunzio, Grimes, and Santel. And up front, John Garvey and Billy Thompson. The starting keeper for the United States is 20-year-old Casey Keller out of Lacey, Washington. He was a member of the U.S. Under-20 team out of the University of Portland. And he is currently battling Tony Miola for the number one job. Eric Eitman is a 24-year-old forward. Will play midfield on the right side from Clemson University. Won an NCAA tournament in 84 and played for Fort Lauderdale of the American Soccer League. The starting 11 for Canada. Some of the faces are very familiar. In fact, they were there in 1986, but some of the faces are new to us and, of course, to Tony Waiters as well. How will they line up? Well, Tony Waiters is going to put that young man, number one, Craig Forrest, in goal. And he's going to go with a 4-3-3. The back four will be Frank Yellow, Ian Bridge, Peter Sarantopoulos, and Colin Miller. The midfield three are Jim Easton, John Limniatis, and Mike Sweeney. And up front... John Fitzgerald, John Catliff, and Nick Gilbert. Well, you hold to her, Tony Waiter, say Craig Forrest. He's never seen him play. He has eight international caps from Coquitlam, B.C. Played with Ipswich Town, the English second division. In fact, was their MVP this season. And John Limney had as a 22-year-old, 16 caps for Canada. He played in the CSL with Ottawa and then became the first Canadian Soccer League player to be sold to a team in Greece. And that's where he's playing with Eris of Greece. The referee from Mexico is Mr. Arto Brizio Carter. And the linesmen are both from Canada and working the near side, Mr. Dave Brummett and Rob Brown. The fourth official is Dominic Pache. Canada against the United States in the opening game of the Corona Three Nations Cup from Swan Guard State on a cool but beautiful day here in Cooper. And I think it's true, Tony Waiter said yesterday, if this was the final 16 for the U.S., they might be a little apprehensive in some of their tackles, some of their plays. But since so many of these players are fighting for positions, Graham, they may just play a little tougher. I think the game will be very competitive. Both coaches want to prove a point in this game, and the 22 players certainly want to do the same. Quickly getting back, Colin Miller. For Canada, as the U.S. take the ball right to Canada, just underway here in the first half. And already the big center backs for the USA come up for this corner kick. Troy Dyack, number five. Robin Fraser, number four. Eichmann to take the corner. Dyack is in the middle of the box. Billy Crook has moved up from his fullback spot. Heading it out of danger is Jimmy Easton. Mike Sweeney over to Mark. Denunzio plays it forward. Little give and go for John Garvey in the United States, just outside the box, and he lays it off for Eichmann. Sweeney marking him. And Craig Forrest makes the first stop of the game as he guarded the near post on the little chip from Eichmann. And that was a tough shot for the very first shot that was deflected viciously. Craig Forrest went down. Watch this ball deflect. Takes a curve. He does well to get that right at the base of the post. Good angle the keeper took on the ball there. That's a tough one for your first shot, folks. Played through to the for the middle and deflected. Lindy Addis heads it forward. Easton looking for John Catliff and Nick Gilbert up front. The front three for the Canadians, Gilbert, Catliff, and John Fitzgerald. Casey Keller plays in the Western Soccer League with the Portland Timbers. Billy Crook in the middle for Rob Fraser. The pass is cut off by Limney Addis. Limney Addis into the box. shot by John Catliff as the Americans guilty of giving the ball away. 
and it broke beautifully for the left foot of John Catliff. He wasted no time. Watch this shot. Great save by Casey Keller in the U.S. goal. Ball's laid in. It bounces nicely for Catliff. He hits it. He must have thought he'd a goal there. A great shot by Catliff, but Casey Keller, the young U.S. goalkeeper, got across and held it. Catliff for Jimmy Easton. To the far side for Mike Sweeney. The cross in front. Over Fitzgerald and Catliff. Now the Canadians putting on a little pressure. And the ball pushed into touch. The U.S. bench under a little bit of pressure now. Billy Crook, doubtful starter for the U.S. at left fullback, had a little bit of a fitness test before the game. It'll be a free kick for the Canadians. Fitzgerald is there, moving up is Frank Yellup, the right fullback. Yellup, a 26-year-old, born in England, lived a good deal of his life in Coquitlam and then moved back. Also played with Ipswich Town and had to get FIFA approval to play in the game. Looking for Catliff. John Catliff, the 25-year-old, 6'3", 17 caps for Canada, played in the 84 Olympics. He was hurt in qualifying for the 86 World Cup. Of course, has played on three Canadian Soccer League Championship teams with Calgary the first year and the last two with Vancouver. That's Timo Leokoski, the assistant coach. Of course, you know him, and right beside him was John Kowalski. The chance, oh, and breaking through. John Limniatis did everything. He did the difficult things perfectly. The, the easy thing was to stick it past Keller, and he just hooked it wide. He walks through the white shirts. When it looks as if he must push it to the left of Keller, he hooks it to his right and hooks it too far, just wide. Great run by Limniatis. It must be a goal. He hooks it wide. And he can't believe he missed it. A great run. Ball pushed forward looking for Billy Thompson of the U.S. Yallop is there to control for Canada. For Mike Sweeney. Into the middle for Limney Yadis. Catliff. Little give and go. And then Limney Yadis is brought down. And the play is blown down by the referee, Mr. Carter. To the near side for Ian Bridge. Yellow. Limney Yadis, and he'll play it back to the keeper, Craig Horst. Tony Waiters returns as head coach of the Canadian national team after taking the club to the World Cup in Mexico in 86 and then leaving the program for four years. Returns and hopefully can work the same magic leading the Canadian team to a World Cup berth in the United States, but of course it's going to be much more difficult in 94 because only one spot will be open. Of course, the USA qualify automatically as horse, and I, many people say Tony Waiters must have been disappointed because Canada didn't score a goal in Mexico. I don't agree with that. I think that Tony Waiters was delighted with the performance that Canada put up in Mexico, and had they scored a goal, it would have only been a little bit of a bonus, but... Not really drastic, not to score. Mike Sweeney cuts it in, still in the box, and finally cleared away. As the keeper, Keller, came out, lost it, and it was cleared away defensively by big Billy Crook. Well, Casey Keller shows a little bit of inexperience here. It was never his ball. He was always a pace away, and Billy Crook has to tidy up for him and hook it wide for a corner kick. This will be the first corner of the game for... Canada cut in and cleared away neatly by the American defenders and in the touch it'll be a Canada throw in. We played just over five minutes of this first half. We're still scoreless. Canada and the United States. Once 
Once again, it'll be Jim Easton over to take this corner as Catliff moves now to the top of the box. Fitzgerald, Ian Bridge has moved up as well. Cut in this time. No problem for Keller as he picked it off the top of Catliff's head. So the score for Casey Keller right now, 2-4-1 against. And the young keeper really has come out of his goal well on occasion, but did make a mistake a couple of minutes ago. But the U.S. defense covered up well for him. Robin Fraser has a look, hoping for somebody to break, and the offside flag on the far side by Mr. Rob Brown. Well, the first three minutes, it looked very much as if USA side would overrun Canada, and you'd expect that because they've been training very hard with the World Cup squad, been training every day, playing games. Canada coming together for the first game under Tony Wade a second time around. Oh, neat play by Limney Addis as he was running away from the ball, headed it for Catliff. Ball still in play. And now pushed into touch, and it'll be a Canadian throw. Yellow to take it quickly. Nick Gilbert as Mike D'Annunzio went over top of Nick. Throwing 23-year-old Robin Fraser out of Miami, Florida, Florida International University. Was an All-American in 1987 and 88. Billy Crook plays it up to midfield. Ian Bridge heads it down, and now it's Colin Miller taking control, the starting left fullback for Peter Sarantopoulos of the North York Rockets to Yellow. And back to Sarantopoulos. And after a burst of action by both sides, it's slowed down a little bit. Now that's to be expected, too. The first five minutes both sides eager to get that early goal but Canada certainly have rebounded from the first spell of pressure that the US put on them there's a player that Canadian fans may remember his two goals in St. Louis and the US's 3-0 win over Canada eliminated the Canadian Olympic team back in May 1987 good defensive player loves to come forward Paul and, Crumpy and Graham we talk about some of the players who are guaranteed spots on the World Cup side Crumpy is is probably one of them along with Casey Keller and Eric Eichmann. Oh, I think so. I, I'd like to have a poor Crumpy on my side. Never gives up. Ian Bridge, right at midfield, chested down. This is Limniatis for Easton. Catliff, Gilbert in the middle. Sweeney trying to get it across in can. Crumpy plays it forward. Eichmann takes it away and pushes it into touch. Throw in for Canada. Catliff gets it across, cleared away. Robin Fraser. Colin Miller. Again, through. Fitzgerald is at the top of the box. It's bouncing around. And the offside flag on the near side this time by Mr. Dave Brummett. John Fitzgerald tried to lay the ball off to Nick Gilbert. Nick Gilbert had just taken a pace too far forward and was offside. Referee Dave, linesman Dave Brummett in the near side. Quick to put his flag up. But Canada creating spaces. They're moving well off the ball. And front runners creating spaces, giving the midfield players lots of time to find them. Casey Keller booms it upfield. Ian Bridge is there to control. Easton. And played into touch. Billy Crook. For Billy Thompson to Eichmann. And given away. Limniatis. Dean Mark by Kevin Grimes. Catliff now double team. Catliff trying to make the turn and he'll leave it on the end line and it'll go as a corner. 
So nice play by Catliff as he left the ball there, and it was the Americans who pushed it over. You know, I, you see people like Catliff still on the side and Bridge and those players who were there in 86, and I said to Tony Taylor, why are they still around? He says, well, they're still very young. They're still in their mid-20s, and until somebody can come along and take the job away from them, then it is their job on the World Cup side. And it's nice for a coach to have a nucleus of players that he's very familiar with, and he can add the new player every now and again. And of course, Tony Taylor still not able to pick his strongest squad with some players still involved in missile in the U.S. And you and I may be both guilty of saying Tony Taylor's it's, it's of course, Tony Waiters. Did I say Tony Taylor? Yeah, and I think I may have as well. So it is. It's Tony Waiters. Tony Taylor, of course, the World Cup coach in between Waiters assignments and now the head coach of the Toronto Blizzard. You talk about the MISL. Both sides hurting a little bit. Ted Eck, who played with Ottawa, of course, now is playing with Kansas City. We'll play with the Toronto Blizzard this year. The MASL Kansas City Comets wouldn't let him come and play. And it's the same thing with people like Carl Valentine and Dale Mitchell of Vancouver. Very much wanted on a side like this, but they're not allowed to get away from Baltimore of the MISL who are involved in playoffs. Catliff works a little give and go, and it doesn't work. Played through neatly. Oh. Sneaking up that far side was Garvey. This is Billy Thompson making the run. Top of the box. Thompson will try. So good opportunities at both ends. We're still scoreless. You're watching the Corona Three Cup on TSA. Billy Thompson does well to get past Frank Yallop on this replay, creates space for himself well, then hooks it just a little too far, and Casey Keller, or should I say Craig Forrest, doesn't have to make the save. You can tell this is our first game for a long time. We're having yeah, a problem with these names up well, here, folks. Yeah, but you, you, Bear with us. you've been on vacation. <laughs> you left the tongue in Florida, I know. Good play by Billy Thompson there. He's shown a lot of sharpness. Little fella, but... Very quick on the ball and give Frank Yallop, the Ipswich skipper, a few little problems with these moves. Sweeney plays it up. Oh, nice sliding tackle by Ian Bridge to take the ball away from Billy Thompson. Sweeney intercepts. And now it's very tight at midfield. Mark Santel, Thompson, little giveaway, played forward and through, and it'll be no problem for the keeper, Greg Forrest. We talk about Frank Yellup, the 26-year-old, no caps, played in 81 English youth team. As we say, he lived in Coquitlam, he played in the BC under-16 team, and they had to go to FIFA for special well, dispensation, special permission to uh, allow him to play and I guess it comes under landed immigrant status but he'll uh, he'll make Coquitlam his uh, his off-season home as does Craig Forrest also an Ipswich teammate Crook plays it upfield right along the line nice turn by Santel as he made gave it away and now it's cleared out of the box neatly by Sarantopoulos but Yallop guilty of going for the dummy Eichmann, top of the box, little give and go with Billy Thompson, doesn't work. And now the Canadians under a bit of pressure as we play just over 15 minutes of this first half, still no score. Robin Fraser for Santal.
Colin Miller for Sarantopoulos. To the near side for Yellum. For Catliff. Getting back was Troy Dayak for the U.S. John Garvey heads it. And Bridge will play it for Forrest. Sarantopoulos. For Colin Miller. Nick Gilbert done a little too far. Mike Denunzio for Troy Dayak. Catliff up to put a little pressure on. And they'll play it back to Keller. Crumpe. Lindy Addis, Denunzio coming together, and Denunzio managing to head the ball upfield. Bridge. Colin Miller. And Robin Fraser will head it into touch. It'll be a Canadian throwing. What's happened to the game? Well, what's happened to the game right now is they've forgotten they've got midfields. The back men are knocking it forward to the, the forwards. And, of course, there's always that extra defender there. The forwards have no chance unless the midfielders get up and support. But if you bypass them, <laughs> then you just virtually put them out of the game. And both teams right now have forgotten about the midfield. They started off so well working through the midfield. And there's Tony Waiters, not Tony Taylor, nothing personal, Tony. Welcome back. Nick Gilbert lays it off, Fitzgerald, edge of the box, Fitzgerald trying to get across and can't. And it'll go over the end line and it'll be a corner for Canada. And I'm sure that Tony Waiters would love to get John Fitzgerald isolated one-on-one -on -one against Billy Crook. Billy Crook had a late fitness test on an injured ankle and John Fitzgerald, of course, one of the fastest men on the field. Mike Sweeney looking for Catliff, just headed away and out of danger, and Paul Crump over the end line. Reminder to stay with us right after the game for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you today by Apple Auto Glass. Before it spreads and really costs you, get Apple's guaranteed stone chip windshield repairs. Just call Apple Auto Glass. The pick of the crop. We're at Swangard Stadium, and we have 24 minutes remaining in this first half. The Grotter, along with Graham Leggett. Game one of the Corona Three Nations Cup. Canada against the United States. Denunzio at midfield. Lays it up for John Garvey. Mark Santel running, and it's headed into touch. There you see the unofficial time in this first half remaining. Of course, it's kept on the wrist of the referee, Mr. Carter of Mexico. Nice move by Kevin Grimes and Fitzgerald back to Mark here. John Limniatis, the 22-year-old, 16 international caps for Canada. Now playing out of Addis of Greece, and he will return to Addis for the conclusion of their season as soon as this Three Nations Cup is over. There you see the head coach of this side here at Swangard. That is John Kowalski, coached in the MIS with Cleveland and he is now an assistant to the head coach of the US world side that is John Gensler and that other team as we mentioned in New Jersey right now played a game against Malta one nothing winners over Malta and later this week they will be playing against Poland the second game for the United States here in the Corona Three Nations Cup will be on Thursday against Mexico 
And at that time, Tony Miola, the other keeper, number one keeper, number two keeper with Casey Keller will fly in for that game and Keller will go back east to play Poland. Easton quickly taken away from him by Eichmann. And to Keller. It's a real battle between these two U.S. keepers, Graham. There's Casey Keller figures that he's number one. If you read Sports Illustrated, you may have noticed an article in the magazine a couple of weeks ago suggesting that Miola was indeed the number one keeper of the U.S. side, and he'll get the first start against Italy. Both very young goalkeepers, very confident. The U.S. going into Italy with the youngest goalkeepers in the whole tournament, but they're both big, strong, good hands, and very confident. I think I have a preference for Miola right now as the, the better of the two, but Keller has shown already that he's got great hands. Ian Bridge has a look being pressured by Garvey and plays it to Sarantopoulos and the, the fans here at Swangard and a good crowd of some 5,000 they were expecting. A little upset because the Canadians aren't working the ball upfield and oh, Limniatis is brought down on a hard tackle by Mark Santal and the warning by the referee, Mr. Arto Brizio Carter. Well, I think this is timing. He comes in a little late gets his knee into John Limnianis, but referee Arturo Brizio Carter from Mexico right on the spot. Pushed into touch, says Mr. Brummett, by Canada, so it'll be a throw-in for the U.S. The Americans put together a roster of 40 players, possible players, for their World Cup side. They will take 22 to Italy, and here's a break now for Billy Thompson. Sarantopoulos, Thompson over the bar as Sarantopoulos moved back and out came Craig Forrest, but a good chance. Little Billy Thompson, he's not very big, but he's quick. He's sharp. Uh, he's already shown that he can make space for himself. He gets a return here, and he's already created the space. However, this is where his inexperience shows. Instead of trying to chip it, he tries to blast it and Craig Forrest way out of his goal. There's the return ball. He takes it beautifully. Southern Topless can't get back to cover. Instead of trying to chip it, he tries to blast it through Forrest, and there's no way. Billy Thompson out of Los Angeles, and he plays for the UCLA Bruins. Very quick at laying the ball off and going for the return and getting a yard advantage on the defender. He's already shown it twice in this game. Lindy Addis for Yallop. He may try it himself, cuts it into the middle of the box for Gilbert, and the better thing might have been the shot there because it seemed to open up, but he decided to lay it off. <laughs> I think he decided to shoot it, and it was a dreadful shot. From where I was sitting, it was definitely a shot, but then Frank Yollop's a fullback for Ipswich, and fullbacks at Ipswich don't get a chance to shoot mm -hmm. on goal too often. But what a pleasant surprise for Tony Waiters to take over the team and find that he's got a player like Frank Yollop with his experience that he can call upon. Gilbert plays it forward for Easton for Catlip. Lays it back, Sweeney. As the Canadians move upfield now, still no score with approximately 19 minutes remaining in this first half at Swan Guy. Easton comes to the near side for Yallop. Fitzgerald will take the pass, edge of the box. Fitzgerald, Catliff. Gilbert are in the middle looking for Catliff! And Nick Gilbert just hits it over the bar. Good play by John Fitzgerald, who for the first time was able to be isolated against Crook. He hits it hard. Nick Gilbert gets his head to it, but he has to come back for the ball. The ball is hit just a little behind him. Watch Gilbert get his head back tries to flick it into the far corner, puts it inches wide. Good move by Fitzgerald, great effort by Nick Gilbert. And that towel for the U.S. That's what Tony Waiters wants. He wants John Fitzgerald wide on the right to go at Billy Crook, just as he did then. Troy Dayak up and pressuring, and Gilbert went up and over. Fitzgerald working against Santal into the box. Gilbert. Hey, 
Sweeney for Canada with Kevin Grimes marking him. And moving up was Colin Miller. Wearing number five for Canada, 30-year-old Ian Bridge. Played the last couple of years in Switzerland with Le Chaux de Fond. Been a member of the national team since 1980. Played in the 84 Olympics, 86 World Cup. And this coming season will play for the Victoria Vistas. And a former World Cup teammate in Bruce Wilson, who is now the head coach of the Victoria Vistas of the Canadian Soccer League. This U.S. team is based out of St. Louis. And you say they've got a beautiful complex uh, facility there for their national training headquarters. They certainly have. They have got two beautiful grass fields. That was the one in which the Olympic side beat Canada's Olympic side back, as we mentioned, when Crumpy got the two goals. They also have two all-weather fields, a training center, dormitories, just a beautiful complex, and shows that the U.S. are at least trying to take the game seriously. Throw in for the U.S. Sarantopoulos finally cleared away by Easton. Robin Fraser takes control at midfield for the United States. Limney Addis, oh my, oh my. Mark Santel didn't keep his head up. Billy Crook came across and he ran right in to John Catliff. Look at this. Catliff just waits for him. Bang. Well, that would have done the the Knicks or the Celtics. That was a great pick by Catliff, but not legal at all in soccer. Blown dead immediately by the referee, Mr. Carter. <laughs> Troy Dayak being watched by Catliff. And it'll go over the sideline. There you see the time remaining, just over 15 minutes, unofficially, here in this first half, still scoreless. Canada and the United States. Colin Miller played with Hamilton of the CSL. And plays, of course, with Hamilton in Scotland. Now, how many players do you think would play the same cities in two different leagues? Well, the names of the sides are a little different. It's Hamilton Steelers, and in Scotland, it's Hamilton Academicals. And he was player coach. Colin did very well, had a good season. Player coach for Hamilton Ackies. Rumor is he bought a mother wolf for next season, and uh, I think Colin's rather excited about it. He may still finish up playing for the Hamilton Steelers. He'd like to come over year. and play maybe half a season, and those discussions are underway. Saren Topless running back, Forrest is out, and the challenge is there from John Garvey. Well, the challenge was illegal by John Garvey, but the advantage was still with Craig Forrest, and referee Mr. Carter allowed the advantage there. Catliff was wearing an ice pack on his right knee at yesterday's workout. Limni Yadis is brought down by Dayak, and the ball into touch. It'll be a throw-in for Canada and Frank Yellop. Chances at both ends. Fitzgerald. Pushed into touch by Crook. Another throw in for Canada. As they just work the fee ball down the field by throw ins. Yallop now trying to get it in the area. Cleared away by Dayak. Ian Bridge looking for Gilbert at the top of the box. Sweeney is there. Can he get it across? I think I can speak for you, and we, we always look forward to coming to Swangard and Vancouver here in the suburb of Burnaby, British Columbia, home of the Vancouver 86ers of the Canadian Soccer League. Great atmosphere. The people of Vancouver and surrounding area love their soccer. 
They're also accustomed to watching the 86ers, and by now it's they usually have two, three goals on the board. They're getting a little agitated because it's still nil-nil. <laughs> Easton down this near sideline, tries to chip it across. The 86ers played an exhibition game against the Canadian side earlier this week, and it was a scoreless tie. But by all accounts, the 86ers look to be another, have a good side, and they've lost some players this year. Catliff battles, finally loses it. Robin Fraser for the U.S. Catliff now. Fraser battling to get back. Gilbert can't turn around, and now it's getting very scrappy just outside the box. Easton for Fitzgerald. Thompson lays it back for Santal. Denunzio for the U.S. Crook has it taken away. Limniatis trying to get it across. Catlin! John Catlin has given Canada a one nothing lead on a giveaway by the United States. From the moment that ball went on John Catlin's left foot, it was going to finish up on the net. A bad mistake by Billy Crook. Gives it to Limniatis, he hits it across. John Catliff, all on his own, tees it up, says to Keller, pick that out. 1-0, Canada against the USA. A dreadful mistake by Billy Crook, but good cool finishing by Catliff. His left foot, his favorite foot, beautiful. One more time, lots of time. The USA at six and sevens. Casey Keller comes out, but you can't beat Catliff's left foot when he gets that amount of time. The goal by John Catliff at 38 minutes to give Canada the 1-0 lead here now late in this first half. And the USA defense have been caught a couple of times trying to push the ball around back in their own danger area and Billy Crook certainly was caught by Limniatis then. Sweeney trying to get it across, has Fitzgerald at the top of the box. Lays it off east and can't get it through. Limniatis as Canada now pressing, looking for two. Limniatis works inside, brought down, and there's going to be a penalty. And once again, it's Billy Crook, who's just a pace too slow. Maybe that injured ankle is really bothering. Limniatis wastes no time and going right at him, goes past, and that's a penalty, no doubt about it. Billy Crook just stuck his foot out, overwent Limniatis, and Catless left foot will be tested once again as he faces Keller. I said the first goal was at 38. It was 34 minutes. So an opportunity now for Canada to make it 2-0 on this penalty by John Catliff. Casey Keller will take his spot on the line. John Catliff. The whistle. Oh, what a great save, and what a morale booster that will be for the United States as Casey Keller makes the right move here on the left foot. And he guesses right. No cheap save that. He didn't move at all early. He read it all the way. Catliff hit it beautifully, but Casey Keller got across a great save by the young goalkeeper. Once again, here comes Canada. Easton taking the ball away from Fraser. And now plays it back for Colin Miller. And they've moved Ian Bridge now to the left fullback spot and pulled Miller into the middle. So it remains 1-0, the goal by John Catliff at 34 minutes. Keller upfield for the United States. Played down and 
Miller heads it to Forrest. Frank Yellow. You know, the, there's a case where you see a keeper and it looks great when he booms it downfield, but he almost out kicks everybody, doesn't he? I mean, there's something to there's something to say for being a little maybe thoughtful and playing it upfield, a little closer to midfield, or at least looking for people. Who wants it? Finally, Fitzgerald takes control for Canada for Sweeney. Oh, a tug of the shirt. As Colin Miller was making the run. Again, it will be keeper's ball and Keller to take control. Denunzio gives it right back. Now how far upfield? Sort of a chip shot by Keller standards, just over halfway. Robin Fraser for the U.S. who trail 1-0 with just over eight minutes on the stadium clock here at Swan Card. Mark Santal, little give and go for Billy Thompson. Sarantopoulos marking him. Billy Crook trying to get away from them. Niatis for Kevin Grimes. Denunzio gets away from Gilbert. Crump lays it off. Now the ball goes off the Canadian defender and it'll be a U.S. corner. And all the white shirts are coming up. Crump has come back to be the lawn mark back on the center circle. Eichmann with a short corner this time. Moves it into the box. And then tries with his left foot and puts it over the bar. I'm not sure if that was meant to be a hard and low cross that got away from him or if he was trying to beat Craig Forrest from that angle. Either way, it was not the end result that he was looking for. Interesting that Eric Eichmann spent a year in West Germany with the Werder Bremen organization. And there are times when he's on the board, you can see that he's been with a professional club. You can tell the difference. Nick Gilbert making the run for Canada against Denunzio, who is back and takes control, plays it to his keeper, Keller. Santal has a look and then turns around, gives it to Robin Fraser. Give the USA credit. They, they try to work the ball out from the back. They don't just hit it downfield and hope that Garvey and Thompson can challenge for it. Canada leading 1-0 on the goal by John Catliff. At 34 minutes should have Tony Waiters smiling. I think Tony would have been smiling more had John Catliff been able to send Casey Keller the wrong way, but the young keeper. You know, there are times when you can't blame Catliff for missing the... He didn't really miss that penalty. That was a Casey Keller save. Catliff hit it well. Yellow for Bridge, who has now moved back to center back. Sarantopoulos looks upfield for Gilbert. Oh, half ball right at midfield, taken by Eichmann. Bridge. Through ball, is he onside? And just punched away at the last moment by Robin Fraser as Catliff thought he was through. You could see John Catliff's eyes light up from here. He got it on his left foot. It was running beautifully for him. And Robin Fraser just got the end of his toe to it and pushed it back to Keller. Great covering by Fraser. He's been most impressive. Denunzio upfield. Looking for Garvey. Sarantopoulos is back. Here's Miller to help out for Canada. And Sweeney is there now as well. Being pressured a little bit. Sarantopoulos finds room through the middle for Limniatis. For Easton. Catliff, Gilbert, and Fitzgerald are up front. This is Ian Bridge moving up now from his center back spot for Canada. Has Fitzgerald near side. Catliff, Easton, Gilbert are all up in the box. Nice. 
Fraser, Santal gets away. And look at the speed of Fitzgerald to come back. Santal, Ian Bridge marking him. Sweeney has dropped down the back four now to cover for Bridge, who had moved up. Santal can't get away. Jim Easton. Unlucky. Jim Easton there tried to hit it with the outside of his right foot and cut it inside Billy Crook for Fitzgerald to run onto. Hit it too cleanly, and of course, the ball went straight through to Keller, but the intention was there. Casey Keller downfield for the United States. Now under five minutes remaining in this first half. one nothing Canada leading. Game one of the Corona Three Nations Cup. Frank Yallop turns and gets it upfield, flicked ahead neatly by Easton. Then a little give and go to Gilbert. The cat lift doesn't work. The ball just over the line. It'll be a Canadian throw. -in. Keeper's glove winds up on the back of Denunzio. That Velcro will stick to anything. Easton steps over the ball for Yallop. Chipping it through for Catliff. And you can see Catliff wave to Easton and say, I know I should have run a little bit on of that one. I'm sorry. Yallop looking for Catlip. How comes Keller to punch it away? As the Canadians go looking for a second goal late here in this first half. Throw in for the U.S. in the dying seconds now of this first half here at Swangard. The Americans are in a tough group, Graham. They're going to play with Italy, Czechoslovakia, and Austria, and they are indeed the longest of long shots at something like 1,500 to 1, according to the, the bookies, bookmakers. It's a funny game, though. You never know. Canada were in a tough, tough group in Mexico. The, the results showed that Canada could play with any of the sides. I'm sure that the USA are not going to be embarrassed, and I think that's their main hope when they get to Italy, but it's going to be tough. There's the whistle from Mr. Arto Brizio Carter, and the Canadian side will go to the locker room with a 1-0 lead on the goal by John Catliff at 34 minutes. And I think that that one goal lead just about describes the balance in play. So after 45 minutes, it's Canada won, the United States nothing. You're watching the Corona Three Nations Cup here on TSN. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Bobby, over here, please. Thank you. So good to see you, sir. 
Oh, look at this <laughs> I'm sorry, what's that? The Escort L and LX are powered by a 1.9 liter inline four cylinder engine. Yeah, I got you. I said, sorry. Sure. Which way? Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> and everybody gets quiet. What an absolutely gorgeous day here in Vancouver. Halftime of this opening game of the Corona Three Nations Cup with Canada leading 1-0 on a goal by John Catlett at 34 minutes. Thank you, Phil. Welcome back to Swan Guard, everybody. Vic Roeder, along with Justin Fashionu and Bob Leonard Doozy. Our opening game of the Canadian Soccer League will be on May the 27th. Hamilton against Kitchener, one of the new franchises. And uh, it's appropriate these gentlemen w are with us because Justin Fashionu now moves, of course, to Hamilton and a revamped Eastern lineup with now London and Kitchener joining Montreal, North York, Ottawa, and Toronto. While in the West, well, it now becomes four divisions only with Vancouver, Edmonton, Victoria, and Winnipeg. Justin, you are uh, acquired in a deal. Now you're going to become the player coach in uh, Hamilton. Your thoughts? I'm very pleased about it because it's a, a very, very strong division. We've got a, a good team. We've uh, uh, signed some good players. Uh, today we signed uh, what I think one of the best midfield players in the country, and I think that it's going to be very competitive. And I'm pleased to get away from Bobby as well for a while because maybe we've got a chance of coming first. That's right. I tell you, what, it was one of the most exciting games we've done. It was that uh, opening game of the semi-final a year ago in Edmonton, New York? Three nothing against. Yes, yeah, right. He keeps getting away from me, this guy. Now, who is this player you signed? Can't tell you yet. Now. Okay. Can't now, tell you yet, but you're here. But you're here also to. to Discuss and to possibly sign a couple of players. Colin Miller you'd like to have back, who's on the field today. And Sven Haberman acquired in a trade, a former keeper with uh, Vancouver. That's right. We, we were pleased to get Sven because uh, Paul Dolan wanted to come and play with Bobby. So uh, it was a straight swap type of thing. With Colin Miller, he's a really excellent player. And he's having a few problems in Scotland at the moment. So I thought it was good to come here and talk to him. Hopefully persuade him to play because he wants to play. And uh, we, we definitely want him because as you can see in that Eastern division, it's very, very strong. And so the best players we can get this be great. We look forward to seeing you on May 27th in the opening game as you play Kitchener and uh, John McGrain's club. Thanks very much. Rick. Now we turn to the uh, coach uh, of the two-time defending CSL champions, Bob Leonarduzzi. Your side has lost some players, but uh, still very strong. Well, we are strong. I guess if anything last year we had too much... Uh, depth. Uh, we have lost a couple of players, although I feel we've compensated for that by the players that we've brought in. So I look for it to be a difficult season uh, in view of the fact that we're now two-time defending an S our CSL champion, so it makes it even tougher. Now the, the changes around the league include signings by Victoria, by the Vistas. I mean, Bruce Wilson has signed a few people. The Fury have strengthened themselves. And, and in Edmonton, Justin's old team with Ross Angaro now leading things, Norma Dinga, they should be tough as well. Well, although we only have four teams in the West, it won't make it any uh, any easier in that uh, the, the playoff structure enables everyone from our division actually to make the uh, the playoffs. So every game will be a difficult one. Every time we play against Edmonton, Winnipeg, and Victoria in view of the additions that they've made, they're going to be tough games. Well, Bob, we certainly look forward, as I say, to joining you again and uh, seeing you when we come to Vancouver. To you, good luck, Justin. We look forward to the start of another CSL season, May the 27th here on TSN, as the Hamilton Steelers open against the Kitchener Spirit. Halftime, Canada, with a 1-0 lead over the United States. It's the Corona Three Nations Cup here on TSN.
come here. Just... Welcome back to Vancouver, and there's still snow in them, our hills in the mountains surrounding Vancouver. An absolutely gorgeous day in Canada with a 1 0 lead on the goal by John Catlett at 34 minutes. You're always entertained by the bands and by the people here at Swan Guard when you come to a game. The first half started off, Graham, as if it was going to be the U.S. You suggested running away with it. And then Canada got some great chances. Just watch as Jim Easton lays this ball square to John Catliff. It's running beautifully for the big striker. You can't hit them much better than this, but Casey Keller just stones him with a great save. Then it was John Limnianis who walked through the entire U.S. defense. He's got Casey Keller at his mercy, but he hooks it just wide. Could have been 2-0 for Canada at that point. Then it could have been 3-0. Keller misjudges the ball, and it's left to Billy Crook to clear it out of danger. The U.S. then came back into the game, and little Billy Thompson does well to beat Frank Yellup and create space here. He makes a great opportunity for himself, but he hooks it past Craig Forrest near post. Great chance for the U.S. goes a bag, and then John Fitzgerald cuts the ball across, and it reaches John Catlip at the far post. He's got tons of time, tees it up, knocks it past Casey Keller. It's 1-0 for Canada. It was John Limniatis who crossed the ball. He'd already taken it off Billy Crook. He gives a great chance to John Catlip. The big striker doesn't miss. There's no chance at all for Keller. John Limniatis back home from Greece was having a great game he goes right at Billy Crook Billy Crook's got no option but to pull him down penalty kick it's Catlett's left foot against Casey Keller and the young keeper stones him just a great save anticipated it beautifully it's still 1-0 Canada the players making their way back onto the field for the start of this second half here at Swan Guard. the goal by John Catliff coming at 34 minutes, and of course he could have had the second one had he scored on the penalty kick, but a great save by Casey Keller. You only have two choices, go left or right, and he made the choice. There's John Catliff, 25-year-old, 17 international caps up until today. Played with Calgary in the CSL, won a championship with them. Then was an 88 MVP with Vancouver as he led the league in scoring. And then last year, playing on a third straight CSL championship team. Casey Keller, that save probably, well, without a doubt, kept the team in the game, the U.S. in the game, because trailing 2-0 now, it would be a long way back. Swangard Stadium on a cool but sunny day, and it's been very warm here in the West Coast. Gorgeous weather. There's been a call for rain the last couple of days, but not a drop has fallen so far in the downtown area of Vancouver. Waiting for the referee, Mr. Arto Brizio Carter, to get the signal to start this second half. And it looks very much as if the USA have substituted 21, Alexi Lalas, for number 17, Billy Crook. Lalas taking his place in the back four for the US on the ball now. And quickly, just as they did in the first half, the Americans taking the play to Canada. There he is. The 20-year-old Alexi Lalas from Birmingham, Missouri, playing out of Rutgers University. For Fraser. And too far, and it'll go to Forrest. by the Canadian keeper. Lalas 
getting into action right away. Yellop. Lindy Addis at midfield wins the ball. Gets it by Eichmann. Now plays it to the far side for Yellop. Yellop. And the play blown down by the referee. Arturo Brizio Carter. And they're looking for, <laughs> was he just checking on the substitution? No, what happened there was that Alexi Lalas had lost one of his boots and it was lying in the middle of the field and the, they were playing around about it. Referee decided it was a little bit dangerous, so they're going to start the game with a drop ball. Good refereeing by Arturo Brizio Carter. He's had a good game. He's handled the game well, but you've seldom seen him. He's got his left foot down now, Alexi Lalas. Maybe when they come on, his sub, he forgot to tie them up. Fitzgerald for Canada. Jim Easton has moved up. Here's a chance if Sweeney can get it across. Come on now, let's go. And pushed over the end line. It'll be a corner. And John Fitzgerald has a chance. Took a little too long to cut that ball by. By the time he got his head up and had a look and counted one, two, three, there were three, four white shirts back to block it. But John Limniata's having an excellent game. He's put some beautiful balls through. Away! Away, team! Bridge heads it up. Away! Headed down. Here's a chance for Fitzgerald. Can't get it away. Dayak was there. And now it's cleared away by Robin Fraser. And he may have taken a boot from Catliff as well. Come on now. In the middle. There you go, Don. No turn, no foul. No turn, no foul. Fitzgerald and over to Marquia. Was Lalas. Well, this is supposed to be a friendly game, but no quarter given or asked here. Catliff's going to have a go at it. Fraser comes in. They both collide. I heard somebody from the U.S. bench saying, no harm, no fuss. I don't agree with it, but there certainly was no harm done. But you can tell that we mentioned with Tony Waiters at the beginning of the game, there's no such thing as a friendly. These sides want to win badly. As we suggested earlier, this U.S. side with so many players looking for spots. They may be just taking this home, not necessarily more seriously, but playing it with more intensity. And Billy Crook sitting with the big ice bag on his ankle. May have been wiser not to start the game, but at this stage in the proceedings with you trying to win a place in Italy, you want to go on there and do your best every game. And he may well have hopped his chances of going to Italy by playing with an injury because he certainly was guilty of two very bad errors in the first half. Sweeney to take this corner. Catliff is there. Just in the box and finally cleared away by Fraser for the United States. Now Sarantopoulos in a race with Thompson and he wins the ball and plays it back to Forrest. Don't you think it's a little late though for the U.S. to have a side that isn't complete? Well, you'd think so, but you'd also think that if they wanted to, to get the team in tune for Italy, they would have brought their first squad to Canada to play against Canada rather than play them against Malta because with all due respect, Malta's pretty rough side. Colin Miller will try himself, and he goes for the near post, and he's wide. When I say Malta's a pretty rough side, I mean ability-wise. I don't mean physical. Beautiful day for a game here at Swan Guard. Nice and cool, sunny. Field is perfect, absolutely perfect. One of the people that Justin Fashionu will have a chat with, he may have already talked with Colin Miller about coming to Hamilton. Who knows? Justin was a little tight-lipped about who he assigned, and it may have been Colin Miller. Mr. Carter saying, you must put the ball inside the white lines, not on top or beyond them. Fitzgerald takes the corner, and Keller is there to pull it down six foot. Two inches, Casey Keller from Lacey, Washington. Into the middle for Kevin Grimes. 
Gives it away. Gilbert then can't get it by Grimes. And Gilbert guilty of the foul. Mr. Carter wants to have a chat with him. Well, there's no question in the enthusiasm of John Catliff. You'd think he was playing for a spot in Italy every time he plays. He, for a forward, he really comes back and challenges well. And if the centre back gives him a dig, I don't think he relaxes till he's given him a dig back. But then, being a former forward, I'm all in favour of that. Lalas plays it upfield and has the pass cut off. Dayak, Catliff marking him. Sweeney cuts down the pass for Canada. For Nick Gilbert, Fraser over to mark him, and it'll go into touch. Nick Gilbert, the 23-year-old from Coquitlam, seven internationals, former CSL MVP with Calgary in the first year of the Canadian Soccer League when Calgary won the CSL championship. This year, he'll play with the Edmonton Brickman. Calgary franchise ceasing to exist in the Canadian Soccer League. And he'll be a good addition for Ross Ungaro and Norma Dinga and the Brickman. He can certainly score goals, Nick Gilbert. He's proven that over the last three CSL seasons, and I'm sure he's looking forward to season number four, as are we all. Keller throws it upfield and give it right back to the near side now for Paul Crumpton. Frazier, Catliff marking him. Marking very tight as the U.S. try to work it out, and you like that, don't you? I really do. I, I give them credit. Uh, they're not kicking long balls downfield. Of course, if it's a do-or-die situation, you've got no choice, but give them credit. They are trying to work the ball out, just as Canada are trying to do it there. Nick Gilbert as Lalas comes over to take the ball away. This is Dayak for Lalas. Head coach Tony Waiters now up and off the bench and doing a little bit more talking to his Canadian side, leading 1 0. And we played 10 minutes of this second half. Sarantopoulos again having to hustle to get back against Billy Thompson. Forrest. Crumpy gets the ball down. This is Limniatis for Canada. For Yallop, Santal marking him. Sweeney. Fitzgerald ahead for Easton. Little give and go if he can get it across, and he can't. And it'll go as a corner kick for Canada. A nice play between Easton and Fitzgerald on that right wing. Interesting that the outside left, Mike Sweeney takes the corners from the right, and John Fitzgerald takes them from the left. Sweeney cuts it in, and it's headed away, and it'll go over the end line again. Purpose of that, of course, is that Sweeney, being a left footer, can hit the in-swinger, and Fitzgerald, from the left wing, being a right footer, can hit the in-swinger as well, and it's much more dangerous. Dayak heads it away, and it's over the sideline throw in for Canada. John Catliff's goal at 34 minutes, the only goal of the game so far. Canada leading 1-0. Frank Yellow. The actual time was 33-51, 34th minute of the game for John Catliff. Statistically, Canada with eight shots in that first half, the U.S. with two, Canadians with five corner kicks, and the Americans with just a couple, and both teams guilty of one offside. And perhaps the most important statistics, John Catliff got the only goal, and Casey Keller saved the only penalty kick.
Looking for Gilbert, it'll be another throw-in for Canada. Denunzio heads it away, Easton in close quarters, and again, it'll be a throw-in for Canada. You know, talking with Tony Waiters yesterday, I was asking him about the old bugaboo about Canada and the lack of goal scoring, and he says, until, he says, it's a, it, people are, have a, it's a misconception. He says, you know, we can score goals, but we have to play to our strength, and goal scoring right now for Canada isn't a strength, so you do what you do best. Robin Fraser trying to make the turn, and he can't as Colin Miller takes it away. Nice play, though, by Sweeney as Sweeney forced him to the outside. Easton. Fitzgerald makes a run down the right wing. For Yallop to Fitzgerald as Easton, Limniatis run through the middle. Gilbert and Catliff are up front. Fitzgerald now triple teamed, and it'll be pushed over the sideline. There's number four, Robin Fraser. I think he's the classiest player on the field for this U.S. side. He may well get a spot in Italy because he's playing sweeper, and I'm sure that if the U.S.A. go into the World Cup playing a sweeper, then they have got a greater chance of keeping the other side's corners. Had an excellent game so far, Robin Fraser. Only mistake he made was in that rush, rush upfield when he lost possession. Sweeney takes the corner, Bridge is on the end of it, heads it down. Easton can't get it through. Bridge moves up, Limniatis gets a tug from behind. Oh, brilliant. Nice <laughs> move to get away from Ekman, but then he fell down, and here come the Americans. John Limniatis has had a, a very, very good game, but the referee had none of his antics there. Had that been in Italy, he would have been booked for trying to draw the foul. <laughs> but it's worth a try, John. Catliff can't get by a sliding Frazier. Santel brings it the other way. Now comes to the near side. Crump. Lalas. Little heel pass doesn't go. Thompson still fighting for it at midfield, and it'll be a throw in for the Americans. There he is, John Limniatis. That might even worked in Greece. <laughs> I spoke to him before the game, and he's just loving it in Greece. He said he, he was disappointed to, to, to leave Ottawa, but he had to take the opportunity. It was his ambition to play in Greece. And, of course, he said, I may have just played it a couple of years and hopefully come back and finish his career in Canada. And, John, I hope you do. Yallop for Canada. Has Catlip Lucky. went just a little too far. One wonders if the fitness of the USA side may be a little better than Canada's in this second half. The USA obviously have been training together, working hard in their... U World Cup preparations. Canada, as I said, putting the team together for the first time this year, coming from league schedules indoor. We'll see as the game goes on if the USA seem to be stronger simply because of the fitness aspect. Jim Easton, 24-year-old, five international caps for Canada. Colin Miller. Gets it across, headed away by Lalas as he was looking for Nick Gilbert. Now Catliff is guilty of getting the boot up and the warning from the referee. But the one, once again, Catliff coming back and trying to win the ball, so Tony Waiters isn't going to criticize him for that. In fact, he's going to admire it. Easton trying to get away from a tug. Sweeney makes the run, and the ball is pushed into touch by Robin Fraser. It will be a throw-in for Canada, leading 1-0, with now under 30 minutes to play. And taking the throw-in is Mike Sweeney, or he's going to leave it now for Colin Miller. But Mike Sweeney, quite incredible. He took a whole year off for a sabbatical, coming back, and he's going straight into the Canadian team. Now he played the winter with Cleveland of the MISL. Little giveaway again in the box at this time. No harm done as Casey Keller was there.
Watch this young man on the ball. Calm, cool, not hurried, tries to work it, tries to look for people. Robin Fraser has been most impressive. Fraser for Paul Crump. Doesn't go. Catlin. Limney Addis with Sweeney Gilbert in the middle. Oh, it just over the line. And it'll be a throw in for the United States. Crump to take it and does so quickly. Little give and go. This is Dayak off the ball. And then he collides with Santal. Fitzgerald. Yallop making the run from his right fullback spot. Crosses it. Can't lift. Gilbert. And oh my. Two heads almost better for one more goal. And you have to wonder if John Catliff may have been better to be a little more selfish and try and head it for goal himself rather than lay it across to Nick Gilbert because Alexi Lalas was right on Gilbert like a glove. He's done well. Alex, the substitute was a a move, a good move by John Kowalski, the USA coach. Alexei Lalas has got the height back in the box there. Fitzgerald gets it in. Easton moves up just outside the box, carries it in. And now it's carried out by Eric Eichmann. Gets away from Limniatis. Eichmann playing it forward. Now it's little Billy Thompson making the run. And getting back was Yallop for Canada. Nice defending job as the Canadians not getting caught, Graham. They're keeping their four men back. You know, you mentioned in the first half that Craig Forrest and Frank Yallop were both from Ipswich. I think a reason for that is they're both BC natives, and for a spell back in the early 60s, Bobby Robson, who was manager of Ipswich when they really were successful, was in charge of the team here in Vancouver. And I'm sure that he's got some friends here who scout the situation and send some of the youngsters over to play on the Ipswich side because Craig Forrest and Frank Yallop have both done well at the Ipswich and both come from BC. Right at midfield, Nick Gilbert. Mike Sweeney. Lalas over to Mark here. Catliff, Gilbert, Fitzgerald, they're all in the box. Catliff to the near side. And a nice sliding tackle by Troy Dayak. Colin Miller will take the throw in. Stay there, Pat. Stay there. Stay there, Nick. Stay there. Can you hear him? Yelling instructions to Gilbert. I want you just at that near post. That's where the ball is going to go. But the big red head of Alexei Lalas was there first. Eichmann. Playing it forward to Nunzio. The U.S. now looking for the equalizer with about 25 minutes to go. And played back neatly by Yellop to Craig Forrest. Sarantopoulos. Yellop. And he'll give it back to Forrest. Well, Craig Forrest has had a very idle second half. I think that's about the third time he's touched the ball and they've all been pass backs. Out of play on the far side. The next game, as we say, in this Three Nations Cup will be on Thursday when the U.S. play Mexico. And then we'll be with you again a week from today, Sunday when Canada plays Mexico in the final game of this round robin. And the Mexican side back internationally for the first time in a couple of years after being suspended for using overage players in an under-19 tournament. Quite a week for soccer on TSN on Wednesday. It's Anderlecht playing in the 
Cup Winners' Cup against Sampdoria. It's Manchester United playing Crystal Palace on Saturday morning in the FA Cup. And then back here on Sunday for Canada-Mexico. What a long, long rivalry that has been. Canada and Mexico. Forrest throws it to the near side for Colin Miller. <laughs> Lalas gives Gilbert a bit of a tug, and now Gilbert and Lalas. <laughs> Good play by Alexi Lalas. Mouthing a little bit to Nick Gilbert there and saying, I don't care how big you are, I'm just as big as you are, and if you want to give me a dig, I'll give you one back. You can see the look there saying, I'm going to Italy. Are you? He's done well since he came on, number 21, Alexi Lalas. I don't know why they didn't start him. Eichmann at midfield for the United States. Gets away from Easton. Offside. John Garvey had just gone a little too far ahead, and re linesman Dave Brummett on the near side, flag up right away. I must say Arturo Bruccio Carter has had a very good game. He's he sort of talked to the players. He's kept himself well in the background. He's been up with the players. Decisions have been quick. Can't ask for much more. Fitzgerald back to defend. Santal can't win the ball for the U.S. Gilbert. And right on his back was Lalas. Lindy Addis. Miller. Push ahead for Sweeney. Fraser moves up. Sweeney wins the ball for Canada, for Gilbert. Sweeney now runs to the middle with Easton and Catlett. Lays it back for Limniatis, and then the ball is pushed into touch by the Americans. Throw in for Canada and Limniatis. Sweeney, Miller. Unlucky. Eichmann cuts off the pass. Pushed up by Grimes for Santal as Thompson and Garvey make the run. Santel lays it off, top of the box. Laid in, here's a chance. Oh, great save! As Eric Ekman was right there, and then Sweeney was on the spot to cover up and play it to Forrest, but very close to being a 1-1 game. And Canada get cut, trying to come back. Eric Ekman all alone. Hits it on the half volley, and Craig Forrest does ever so well to come out and block the shot. For the first time in this game, Canada's been caught pushing forward and couldn't get back in time to pick up every one of the white shirts. USA broke quickly there, six on four. Grimes moves it upfield for Garvey. This time, Bridge is back along with Sarantopoulos. They'll push it to the near side for Colin Miller. And that could be the first sign that this Canadian side is not quite as fit as their U.S. counterparts. And might be time now for a substitution by the Canadians as Eichmann tries to bring the ball through. And Limniatis will get a little talking to by Mr. Carter for that trip. And he'll get a yellow card. So John Limniatis, lazy little tired tackle and he goes into the black book with a yellow card so the booking to John Limniatis let's see if Eric Eichmann tries his luck from this far out with a shot he can hit them no doubt about it Eichmann is over the ball He'll try it himself. <laughs> Under 20 minutes to go. It's still 1-0 Canada, the Corona Three Nations Cup on TSN.
The Canadians have made a substitution as we return to Swan Garden Stadium. Jamie Lowry from the Vancouver 86ers has come on to replace Jim Easton. And defensively, probably that's what it's all about. Good reaction from the crowd here at Swan Garden when they said coming out of the game is number six Easton. There was a boo. Now when they said going into the game is number 12 Jamie Lowry, there was a great cheer. Both players, of course, standouts for the Vancouver 86ers. One nothing. Canada leading on a goal by John Catliff at 34 minutes. Game one of this round robin of the Corona Three Nations Cup defensively. What a nice move by Sarantopoulos to get the ball away. Miller has the Americans now putting on some pressure and a wicked hop over the boot of Ian Bridge. Yallop has a look and slows the play down. As you can tell, the Americans starting to pick up momentum here in the middle half, the middle parts of this second half. Fitzgerald makes a run. Denunzio gets back. Eichmann for the U.S. to Dayak. Ian Bridge will take control and he'll play it back to Forrest. Miller. Near side and the push in the back from Lullis on Gilbert and it'll be a free kick for Kelly. Warming up for the U.S. is 21-year-old Jeff Basher from Sunnyvale, California of Santa Clara University and the substitution will be made now. Mark Santel coming off. Had a good game. He's run well. He's covered well in that left back, left half situation. And gets a little congratulations from coach John Kowalski. He's run well, Mark Santel. So Jeff Beicher is into the game for the U.S. Sweeney cuts it into the box. Just over the head of Catliff and Gilbert. Cleared upfield by Dayak, and Beischer quickly has his first touch. Bridge. We'll leave it to throw in for Yallop. For Catliff. Fitzgerald. Yallop. Upfield for Gilbert. Lallis. Lowry. Oh, Jamie had thoughts. Nimniatis. Gilbert. Lalas marking him. Just outside the box. And again, Lalas guilty of the foul on Gilbert. And they've had a battle ever since Lalas has come into the game. Oh! No, you walk outside the wall. You hold that there, Trapper. Sweeney will take the free kick. Bridge has moved up as well. It's Gerald. On your whistle. On your whistle. Plays it back. Yallop will try. And then Fitzgerald try to knock it down and leave it, lay it off, and it didn't work. Sarantopoulos. John Garvey up. Pressing, and he'll play it for Forrest. And super sub, Doug Muirhead is warming up on the sidelines for Canada. Another Vancouver 86ers player. This Canadian side could be all Vancouver. Sweeney chips it across, and Lalas was there perfectly to cut it off. Sweeney now trying to get through, and can't. But well played by Lalas as he cut off the pass to Nick Gilbert. He was with Gilbert step for step. Lalas has done very well. He's big. Crude and very effective as a stopper. Kevin Grimes lays it upfield and it comes back to Grimes. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 
no foul as Beischer goes down. There's Dougie Muirhead from the Nimo BC. He's played with Vancouver three years in the Canadian Soccer League. And as Graham says, they call him Super Sub because whenever he's come off the bench in one of our CSL telecasts, he's usually scored a goal. Cut in. Oh, dangerously as Lalas made the run from the back and Gilbert forced to cover him defensively. Gilbert and Lalas have not been more than six inches apart since Lalas came on at the beginning of the second half and Nick Gilbert does ever so well to save the situation there as the big center back for the USA was just about to stick it past Craig Forrest. Eichmann will take this corner for the US. The far post, Lalas is there. Ooh, and Frank Yallop holding his position right at the post to prevent the ball sneaking in, allows it to hit the base of the post and go past for a goal kick. But Lalas, I don't know why they, they didn't start Lalas. He's been very impressive in the second half. Limniatis at midfield for Canada. Fitzgerald across the top of the box. Dayak is there. Oh, Limniatis. You know, it was set up for Gilbert and Limniatis played. There he is. Doug Muirhead, the 28 year old, one international for Canada. Played on Canada's team at the FIFA Five Aside World Championship. John Catliff coming out of the game. He has the only goal in 34 minutes. And coming in, wearing number 14, is Doug Muirhead. So, two substitutions, and both of them, Vancouver 86ers for Vancouver 86ers. Good move by Tony Waiters. You get rid of a little bit of height, unfortunately, but you get some speed in Doug Muirhead. Well, look at him now, turning it on as he gets it around, and forces Crump to come back to defend. And what Tony Waiters is looking for is if the defense has to hit long balls upfield, Doug Muirhead can get behind the defense and challenge for them. Jamie Lowry comes across. Sweeney is there. Crump takes control for the U.S., chips it into the area. Ian Bridge is back, trying to defend against Eichmann. Miller is there as well. And headed out by Jamie Lowry, and it'll be a throw in. And I'm sure that Tony Waiters is realizing that the USA team are beginning to get a little quicker to the ball. Uh, I'm sure the fitness is a factor and that the US side is a little fitter than this Canadian side at the moment. And as the game wears on, it may well tell. Well played by Craig Forrest as he throws it upfield. Now it's one on two. Muirhead and Lowry's getting up and this could be it. Lowry's in the open. Lowry! Well played by Muirhead as Lowry got behind and then just missed with the right foot as the U.S. were caught. And that's what Muirhead was there for, to get behind defenders. Great run by Jamie Lowry, but he's just put off by a little nudge by Alexi Lalas, who had run all the way back from the edge of the box. Great support by Lowry to get up for that square ball from Muirhead, but full marks to Alexi Lalas the USA substitute for getting back and just, I'm sure the sound of his feet pounding on the grass put Jamie off a little. But that's what Doug Muirhead's there for, to challenge for these long balls, try and get behind the defense and square it for the support coming up. Colin Miller with the throw in for Doug Muirhead. Tries to spin it through for Sweeney. Chip and it. he wins the ball. Sweeney. Lays it back, Gilbert will try. Oh, the ball was sitting there beautifully for Mike Sweeney to chip it because Casey Keller had come right off his line, but Sweeney sees Nick Gilbert in a better position, squares it, Gilbert hooks it well wide of the post. Casey Keller upfield. Colin Miller. Or Sweeney. 
looking for Gilbert, and right there, I guess, of course, <laughs> is Lawless. <laughs> and Nick Gilbert looking to the referee saying, get this guy off me. He's got one arm on my shoulder. He's got his knee up my back. That's what he's there for, Nick. He's there to stop you, and he's doing a great job. Robin Fraser makes the run. Looking for Crumpy, who is moving up as well from his fullback spot. So the Americans now looking for the tying goal down one nothing, or even pushing defenders up. We've seen Lalas in the area, and now the right fullback, Crumpy, moving up as well. Sweeney, Limniatis. Cleared away by the Americans. Watch the way that Craig Forrest uses the ball. We spoke about the great run by Doug Muirhead a minute ago, and we spoke about the great support run by Jamie Lowry. But from hands, for Craig Forrest to throw it 20 yards into the USA half, that was a great throw and great distribution by Forrest. Well, as I say, maybe better use of a uh, little bit of thinking, you know, you don't overkick everybody. Billy Thompson. And pushed into touch. It'll be a throw in for the U.S. Eric Eichmann. Taking his time. Time the U.S. can't afford. They're down one nothing. They uh, heads it forward. Muirhead for Gilbert. Fitzgerald following up. Limniatis is on this near side. He goes to the opposite side for Gilbert. Chipped into the middle for Limniatis, who tries to head it down. Okay. Timo Leokoski in the foreground, in the background, the coach of this side, John Kowalski. Timo, of course, in the NASL, I remember him from there and working with you in Edmonton. Yes, Timo Leokowski was the coach for the Edmonton Drillers when I was there, and uh, we did very well, and he won the indoor championship for the Edmonton Drillers. Very good indoor coach. Keeps tons and tons of notes, almost like a hockey coach, the way he coaches indoor soccer. Of course, he comes from Finland, so he's well-versed in hockey. There he, he is with involved the red in the MISL for a number of years as well, and telling me yesterday that he's going to... The Americans trying to press, and the ball pulled down, and it'll be a Canadian ball. He's going to become a, a house father as his wife goes back to university to pick up her doctorate, and he's going to take care of the children. That'll be nice for Timo, because his wife's always done that while he spends 24 hours a day on soccer. He lives for the game. But he's not going to Italy, he was saying. This no, he's not. Ian Bridge, there you saw the time remaining, just over five minutes unofficially, 1-0 Canada leading. And this ball will go into touch. And now that you can see the urgency in the white shots, they're virtually throwing everybody forward except Robin Fraser. I wouldn't be at all surprised if in the last two, three minutes they move Alexi Lalas right up front. Your head, near sideline, midfield, Lowry trying to get away from Fraser, and he's brought down. Quickly taken by the Canadians, and now it's Yellow who's moving up, lays it off. Fitzgerald has a look. The Nunzio marking him, and it'll go as a court. Not necessarily a bad play, is it? If if the Americans want to pick up the pace, why not you take your your kicks quicker as well? Let's go with them. Exactly, and this is not a bad play either to get Mike Sweeney to come all the way from the left wing across there and waste about two minutes taking this corner kick. You'll notice that Saran Topless is way back here along with another red chip to make sure that the U.S. team don't break quickly. And the 86ers crowd or the Canadian crowd at Swan God certainly didn't like that decision. Gilbert guilty of backing up into the keeper, Keller. Right at midfield, Lowry. Yallop to Sarantopoulos. And now he has to think. 
because Garvey had gotten in behind and the pass back to Forrest wasn't there. Under five minutes to play, one nothing Canada on the goal by John Catliff. But only Mr. Carter of Mexico knows the official time. And the game has really been injury free. Except for occasional loss of shoe, there's been no delays. And it's been brilliantly handled, I feel, by Arturo Bruzio Carter. Congratulations, Mr. Carter. Excellent game. Look at this. Keller has moved up, and he'll take the kick. The edge of the box. Bridge is there. So is Lallis. Trying to control Serentopoulos. Bridge now cleared away by Miller. Fraser for the Americans. Lays it off. Crump gets it across. Oh! Ho, ho. The desperation header. Top by chance. Billy Thompson just wasn't there. Everybody's pushed forward, but this is a very tough chance to try and cut that ball on target. Full marks for a great effort, nevertheless. Billy Thompson, a little number three. He really is sharp. It just shows that there's a place in this game for little guys. I haven't been a little guy myself. Uh -huh. The offside flag, it'll be Canadian kick. To the near wing for Sweeney. Trump is back to defend, and Sweeney is guilty of backing in. He wanted to send a message to the Americans and to the Mexicans that Canada was back, and so far the message is a winning one. Canada leading 1-0, and uh, the coaching of Tony Waiters in his debut again as national team coach. And he can get a chance to hand the message to the Mexicans personally next Sunday when the two teams meet here at Swangart, live on TSN. The Mexicans will be arriving in Vancouver in the next day or so to spend about a week don't have that much time because their first game, of course, will be Thursday against the United States. Your head can't turn. Mr. Carter checks his watch. Dying moments now here at Swangard. This has been a good first game back for Tony Waiters. A very good all-round performance. Good hustle by the forwards. Creative play by the midfield and a very, very sound defense with Craig Forrest really not being tested at all. Billy Thompson. Fraser makes a run up through the middle. Now he lays it off for Denunzio. And then over the head of Beicher, who is playing the left wing. And there is the whistle from Mr. Carter. And it'll go into the books as a 1-0 win. And a shutout for that man, Craig Forrest, as Canada wins it 1-0 over the United States. And handshakes now as the head coach, John Kowalski of the U.S., congratulate Tony Waiters. And I don't think that the U.S. can be too disappointed with the result. It could well have been more had it not been for brilliant goalkeeping by Casey Keller. 1-0 Canada, a winner over the United States here in Burnaby, British Columbia. Now it's time for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you by Apple Autoglass. To nil, Eric Eichmann gets a great chance to tie the game, but Craig Forrest saves well, really well. Craig Forrest saved the Apple Autoglass. Turning point. Cash donation will be made to Amateur Sports on behalf of TSN and Apple Autoglass, saving you money on stone chip windshield repairs. One goal by that man, John Catliff at 34 minutes. He's the player of the game. 
Canada wins it one nothing over the United States. The opening game of the Corona Three Nations Cup here in Vancouver on TSN. Okay. Where is John? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done, sir. Nothing else. Beautiful day, and for Canada, a beautiful result. one nothing win over the United States on John Catliff's goal at 34 minutes. The Corona Three Nations Cup player of the game, John Catliff, as he scored at 34 minutes. He got the only goal of the game and hustled all the way through. John Limniatis crosses for him, and John Catliff has made space. He's just got gallons and gallons of room, and on his left foot, no chance for Casey Keller as John Catliff, the big 86er striker, slips it past him. Good control by the big fella. Takes his time, doesn't panic, just pushes it into the back of the net. John Catliff, player of the game. Once again, the final score of this opening game of the Corona Three Nations Cup. Canada won, the USA nothing. We'll have more when we return to Vancouver in just a minute. Once again, the final score. Canada won. USA nothing and a goal by John Catlin. It's been brought to you by Corona. The Corona Three Nations Cup here on TSN. Once again, we'll be here a week from today, 4.30 Eastern Time, Canada against Mexico in the final game of the round robin. The Cup Winners' Cup will come your way here on TSN, May the 9th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Then, of course, on Saturday, you will see Manchester United and Crystal Palace at 9.30 a.m. May the 12th. And the Champions' Cup, of course, you'll see Benfica and Milan here on TSN. And don't forget the World Cup beginning here on TSN June the 8th. On behalf of Graham Leggett and our entire crew, I'm Vic Rauter. Once again, Canada wins 1-0 over the United States. Goodbye from Swan Guard Stadium.